Hi and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. This time around it's a bit different. It's Wednesday, it's the day I can do anything I like. And so I thought I'd do some movie reference books that I like. I've done a video about this previously. I've got a whole bunch of new books since then. I just said new like an American. And I thought I'd share them with you. If I know where you can get them, I will post a link in the description. You probably won't find these ones very easily, but because I'm a fan of French cinema, I thought I'd show them to you. And this is a two-volume collection of the history of French cinema between 1946 and 1966. In the case of the first volume, which is that. Now I've got to angle that because of the light. A slightly naughty picture of a lady on the back. But the second volume came out 10 years later, so this is up until about 1976. And I found them both at the same place. I think it may have been in a charity store in Sydney when I was there. But I like these. If I want to dive into French movies for the channel, which are set in that period between 1946 and about 1976, these two are my reference books. Yes, I could get all of the stuff off Wikipedia possibly, but the lovely thing about books rather than just going onto websites is the detail, the, the kind of granular detail about the subject matter and the expertise of the author. And I like this. They've got pictures in them. But let me show you some. Make sure it's safe. See, there's, there are pictures in there of the various movies. But I like doing this. So I like diving into old French cinema in particular because non-English language cinema is something that most people watching this know not enough about and i want to know more about it every now and then i go to a rabbit hole and might deep dive into italian cinema or french cinema or dutch cinema or a cinema of hong kong or malaysia or japan and having these reference books there i can just kind of sit back or i can go down to the waterfront and have a coffee in a lovely little cafe i know and just sit there and read and that is as close to heaven as i get being an atheist so i've got that one now let's move on to something totally different Horror. now one of the one of the problems i've got is that i've got a lot of older reference books reference books that are 10 20 30 40 50 years old so when middle-aged good girl and i were wandering around she pointed out this one to me and i like it i like what it says the essays in it are great there's a whole bunch of essays by queer and trans writers about horror movies it's called It Came From The Closet, which has some terrific essays about modern horror films and older ones too. Movies like Hereditary get covered, The Blob and Society, Godzilla. Eyes Without A Face gets a mention as well. Get Out, The Leech Woman, The Birds, Dead Ringers, The Wolfman, Candyman, Friday the 13th Part 2, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Us and The Blair Witch Project. I've already dived into a couple of the essays here and they're all great. And the perspective is terrific. The insights are good. This one I really enjoy. A whole bunch of different writers who are queer or transgender. They're just talking about the stuff that we all love. Horror movies. And classic horror movies as well as new ones. It's a great book. It cost me a little bit. But I'm not unhappy with it. Because it's one that I can dive into repeatedly. Just read an essay on a particular movie. Go, oh yeah, I didn't think of that. And just enjoy the hell out of it. So I recommend that one. I'm going to try to post a link where you can find it. Now we'll go into a couple of biographies of actresses. And these are not small, but we all know I love Ava Gardner. And Lee Server's biography of Ava Gardner, Love is Nothing, which is a chunky hardcover that I've picked up, is really good. It goes through her whole life and her career. This is the book where I learned that George C. Scott beat the hell out of her when he was drunk when they were making the Bible the movie, The Bible, by John Huston in the 60s. And it goes into a lot of detail, talks to people who knew her, talks to people who worked with her. Really good deep dive biography of Ava Gardner, who, because she was so beautiful, was underrated as an actress. But she was a definitely solid actress. She had problems with alcohol, as pretty much anybody who's in movies in the 20th century did there's a picture on the back from on the beach by the look of it and yeah make your sticker this one it's a beautifully detailed and compassionate look at ava gardner and again it's called love is nothing and i really appreciate having that one john l williams america's mistress the life and times of earth a kid i've got two biographies of Eartha Kitt. i've got her autobiography from the late 1950s early 1960s and I have this one. There are two quotes on the back which are great. The most exciting woman in the world, awesome world. And the other one says, a sadistic nymphomaniac, the CIA. 
because the CIA didn't like people of colour coming into any prominence in the 1950s, and so their dossier of her may just have been a little bit skewed. Good biography, giving the context of a woman of colour becoming a movie star and a celebrity and a nightclub entertainer during the middle part of the 20th century, and it's one I'd recommend as well. This one my friend Trev gave me, and it's, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. It says, Robin Cross presents The Bible According to Hollywood, which is not thick, it's, it's that thin. It's basically a whole bunch of pictures from movies with funny captions on them, and they're all pretty much all about Bible, biblical epics in the movies. I read through this in five minutes. Bras in the Bible, that one says. I may well pass it on to somebody else. It's a little tongue-in-cheek, a little bit silly. And Trev sent me a picture of it and said, do you want this? I'm going to give it to you. And I went, yep. And he gave it to me and I've read it and now I'm going to pass it on to somebody else. This one, another, I keep paying $30 for movie reference books. This one's no exception. It's uh, written by Peter Dendel, who's an associate professor of English at Pennsylvania State University, or at least was in 2011. And this is not up to date, but it's a nice reference book when I want to cover a particular sub-genre of horror films. The Zombie Movie Encyclopedia. This one is a lot of fun as a reference book. It's got small essays about the movies, and let me just angle that so you can see it, and covers them kind of nicely. Not too much detail on each individual movie, but you can look the movies up alphabetically. Very rudimentary art on the cover, but that kind of makes it work. Again, it's one of those reference books when I'm covering a certain genre. Haven't done too much on zombies, maybe I should do a bit more. But when I cover a particular genre, it's good for me to be able to just grab a reference book, get a few details, watch the movie, and then use magic to work it all out between the reference book I read, the movie I watched, and my own brain. This one is kind of weird. And again, I got this for $5, which is good. It's called The Secret Lives of Great Filmmakers. And it's got all of the weird shit that filmmakers, particularly people like Hitchcock and Chaplin and Fellini did. Cecil B. DeMille, very irreverent and basically names and names. See, it's got a chapter on Louis Bumwell. Uh, yeah, it's, it shows that a lot of people who made the movies we love uh, were sick puppies. And people who make the movies we love these days are sick puppies as well. But this one, uh, it's got some nice illustrations in it. There's a chapter on Jean-Luc Godard as well. If you want to check out a particular director, you can use a book like that. Get a few facts into your head and amaze people at dinner parties. I've read it once and every time I need a factoid about a particular director, I can always dip into it and enjoy the madness and sometimes it is madness of particular movie directors now this one is what we had before imdb and it's called preview 1959 which is a preview of a whole bunch of movies it's got color and black and white illustration there you go that's the kind of stuff you got in there beautiful actresses who have we got in the beautiful actresses piper laurie julie london virginia mckenna julia greco it's that kind of thing. And it has essays about particular films. Her saleable talent is acting, says James Mason. Well, I didn't think he was a tap dancer. Yeah, and it's nice to just see how the past promoted movies before TikTok and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and, and all of the vast machinery of promotion that we have now. You had little books like that. There was probably a slipcover on it at some stage, but I have, don't have that. But I enjoyed reading back in a cave I'll find movies I knew nothing about that sound real intriguing. And then I watched them. See, there's a secret to finding all these hidden gem movies for the channel. Now, this chungus of a book is beautifully well written. And it's the history of cinema from its origins to 1970 by Eric Rode. And it covers a lot of things. It covers from the Lumiere Brothers all the way to 1970 and Roger Corman movies, and all of those German 1930s mountain climbing movies that people like Lenny Riefenstahl did. It's got everything in it, tons and tons of detail, dense with text. And again, it's a good reference book, and it's good to just read a chapter and go, I didn't know that about 1930s musicals, or I didn't know that about 1940s gangster films. On the spine, it's got um, William Holden in The Wild Bunch, and on the back, it's got a bit of a montage of movie stars just like it does on the front but a book like this is great you can just leave it on the coffee table when you're not in the mood to watch anything and i occasionally am not in the mood to watch anything you can just kind of go into it take a look at it and learn stuff this one i like it's called hollywood talks turkey the greatest grief flops by doug mcclellan and basically all he did was got quotes from actors 
and directors and other movie people about their worst movies or about the worst movies they know. They, they're covering things like, it's got Brian Ahern and Ed Asner. There's an alphabetical one through here. Gloria Swanson, Barbara Stanwyck, Neil Simon, Vincenta Minnelli, Roger Moore, Regis Philbin, Loretta Young, Teresa Wright, Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett. And so they've got all these chapters with different subjects like political movies and historical films and it's kind of interesting to see, after they're no longer under a non-disclosure agreement, what actors talked about as far as the movies that they'd made that they really didn't like. Nice little juicy thing there. It's not salacious in any way, but it's just the perceptions of, of talented people and how they managed and kind of work through the issues of being under contract. They, you have to make this film, making it, and then dissing it afterwards. One of my favourite film critics, and writers for that matter, Kim Newman, Apocalypse Movies. It's all about apocalyptic movies. I should have checked this out when I did Virus, but I didn't. And it's got everything from Independence Day backwards, pretty much. When was this put out? Um, first edition, 2000. So it takes you up to the millennium. And it goes as far back as cinema goes, as far as um, apocalyptic movies. It's got Deluge and things like that, War Games. Teenage Caveman, it covers the waterfront and Kim Newman's writing style is enjoyable and, and slightly flippant and tongue in cheek and a little bit sarcastic at times but it's worth checking this one out and you should be able to find it around if you look around a little bit. Now the last three are about a subject that's dear to my heart and that I hate at the same time. Censorship in cinema. And the first one I've got is Paul Hoffman's The Golden Age of Censorship which talks about movies being banned in British homes. It covers the video nasties. It covers movies like Cannibal Holocaust, The Exorcist, Reservoir Dogs, Salo. Another thing about this that you don't know is that it's actually a novel. It's a novel about living through the British censorship during the video nasty era. Haven't read all of it yet. I started reading it, but it looks like a lot of fun and it looks like an interesting way to discuss that era of governmental silliness. Next one's James Cockington's I've Got to Cover This Up Because It's Got a, a Nipple in It. Tales from the Bazaar history of Australian censorship. James Cockington's banned. And it's the history of obscenity legislation and banning things in Australian cinema and television and popular media in general. It's I'm not showing you the back because it's got lots of nudity in it. But this one was published by ABC Books, ABC being the government broadcaster back when they were publishing a lot of books. They give you a full history of the history of censorship in Australia, as indeed does this next book, which is only just released. It's um, from an author, Simon Murado, who lives in Western Australia, and it goes through a lot of the same area that James Cockington's book covers. And the last one, as I said, is Simon Murado's Book of the Band, which covers some of the same area as James Cockington's book, but does it from a more modern viewpoint because James Cockington's book's about 12 or 15 years old. It's it's about the bits that were cut out of movies for Australian audiences and the fact that movies were banned, like Frankenstein was banned for decades here in Australia. It's, I've only got one complaint about it. I don't like the font. But apart from that, lots of good information, incredibly well researched, very readable, and it's available now, so I will definitely post a link to this one. The history of censorship is, to me, as interesting as the history of cinema because it shows the kind of cultural context that these films were released in and the kinds of people who gatekeep or at least gatekept the films for the audiences in Australia and assumed that people couldn't decide for themselves whether they wanted to see nudity or, or very adult material or anything like that. Um, so yeah, censorship's a weird thing to me and fortunately with the internet it's at best a speed bump. If people want to see an uncensored version of a movie, it's not too difficult for them to find one. And on that note, that's what I've got for you this time around. Lots of movie reference books. I've got, I could probably do this video four or five times because I've got a ton of movie reference books. And I learn from them. Every time I read a, a movie reference book or a book of essays reviewing films or anything like that, I don't come out of it dumber. I come out of it smarter, I come out of it with a different viewpoint on things. I, I, sometimes it challenges my viewpoint to see somebody's review on a movie. And I can sit with that for a while and kind of evaluate it and go, yeah, they've got a point there, or no, they're talking out of their bum. Either way, reading about movies as much as watching them teaches you about cinema. And that's something that I love, and I'm sure it's something that many of the people watching this video love. So 
On that note, thanks a lot for watching. Can you please like, subscribe, and leave a comment? You can also support the channel by becoming a channel member, and there's a link in the description of the video. And you can support the channel otherwise by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash terrydogsmovies. Science Fiction Saturday is coming up, and I've got a couple of cool movies for that. And until then, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies, read some movie books, and I'll catch you next time.